We started in Portland, Oregon. We just rode right out of a friend's driveway, and we're going to Ushuaia. Name? Aiden. Tara. Where are you from? What you do? Uh, I'm from Maine originally, and we were living in Portland, Oregon. And uh, we went to a small business. And I'm Tara, and I am from Alaska, but living in Oregon with Aiden when we started the trip 17 months ago. And we have two months left. I was working at a desk as a graphic designer for many years, uh, so it was pretty easy to leave. I, I, I wouldn't, I don't know if I would do it all over again. Maybe I'm a different bicycle, but absolutely would recommend it for somebody else to do it. What would you change? I would probably, like many tours, tours, uh, maybe go a little bit more on the bike packing setup because the freedom that even we were allowed by being lighter than most was we had a lot of flexibility with what we were able to ride and sure. those are the places we wanted to be maybe it took us longer than people who were <coughs> the people who had a better setup but we were still able to do it and those those were the highlights of the trip really I hate cards. I mean, I think it's important to prepare and kind of have what you need, but also to over prepare. If you wait till you have everything that you need, mm -hmm. wait till you have the perfect bike and the perfect sleeping bag and the perfect tent, and I mean, you'll just never, you'll never leave. So there are people living along the entire route in every country people are living and need almost the same things that you need so you can always find those things by yeah, shops, just leave. clothing, food, just like, get going down the road and, and you'll figure out exactly what, what's important and what isn't and you can pick it up or you can drop it off and, and ignore the obsessive bike maintenance blogs <laughs> <laughs> daily budget we probably go on about $15 a day for the two of us. Would yeah. that include even like uh, gear repair or gear replacement or is... No, and I think probably for the trip, we, we allowed for, um, for basically $15 a day per person, but the reality is that you end up much closer to, to half of that. It's an exception in the expensive countries. It's an exception, you know, if we're paying for comforts along the way, which certainly we do, stay in hostels or stay in hospitajes or get a good meal every once in a while. Well, we haven't replaced almost anything. So we're, we're, we're falling apart, but <laughs> we're also almost, uh, we have two months until we fly home. So if things start to fall apart, like, who cares? So certainly for somebody continuing on for a much longer time, yeah, that would be a consideration. And our trip is maybe 19, 20 months in total. And I think that's a realistic amount of time to be able to save for ahead of time. So we're not as concerned with trying to make income along the way, which if you were on a much longer trip, you'd probably be more frugal than we are and you'd probably need to earn something at some point. But for us, we'll just go back with nothing and uh, <laughs> make it work. Live with mom and dad for a little while. There's more than you can, you can count. There's, that's, you learn them every day. You unlearn them every day, but then you learn them every day. I think uh, there's just many, many, many ways to live in the world. Uh, from, you know, the people we meet existing in South American cities to campesinos way out on their properties in Peru. Um, and then as far as uh, travelers and meeting travelers, I think probably our, uh, our number one lesson, takeaway, ongoing joke is uh, 
is listening. Uh, you'd be surprised at, uh, at how often you end up in a conversation and, and it's a pretty much one-sided affair and somebody's just telling you about how awesome their trip is and what they're doing. And I mean, it's a good reminder because people do have really interesting things to say. So if you ramble on about yourself and your bike trip, you are missing out on a lot of what other people have to say. And we definitely don't want to be the people who go back to Portland, Oregon. And so, oh, this reminds me of that time that we were in that mud hut in Peru. <laughs> it's like, you This know, one people, time in Peru. People want to hear stories, but people don't want those stories to be forced and obnoxious. <clears throat> and because, uh, yeah, they have to be, you have to be relatable, right? I mean, I think Peru was an unexpected highlight. Absolutely. I thought I was sort of cursing the the Pikes on Bikes for the Great Divide while we were doing it. Uh, but looking back, it was such a highlight. It was like the beginning of really freedom. You know, we were disconnected from towns and people for four or five days at a yeah. time and for the first time we had to really plan and be really self-sufficient and I think in a lot of other places that's been necessary and so that was I meant to mention just the scenery and the people and it was pretty stunning it's been pretty hard to to get back to that point but everywhere since then it's been nice and I've Obviously, the scenery down here is good as well. We are in Patagonia, by the way. We are in, we are in one of the most beautiful parts of the Ooh. entire world. But there was just something really shocking about Peru. But I think Patagonia is going to be a, a highlight, too. Do you have uh, health insurance? No, we know we had traveler's insurance at first. And I tried to file a claim for like $75. and. Uh, like maybe 10 email exchanges later it was it seemed stupid to have it so we don't have anything um, which may also be stupid which may also be stupid Aiden definitely got sick way more than I did his stomach is much weaker and I eat everything I'm gonna, I, you, you gotta eat everything it's exciting you know you're in places and they serve great food and you gotta try it and then you gotta you gotta, you gotta pay the price and I paid the price. You lost 17 pounds. Pretty much once a month for a couple months there. Yeah, it's pretty extreme, but nothing like, you know, we haven't gotten Zika or rabies or all the things that the travel clinic uh, tells you not to leave your house. You'll Certainly no malaria, things. no yellow fever. We've got a pretty expensive immunization booklet in our yeah. passport bag. and. Uh, I got bit by a dog and it really wasn't that big of a deal. A couple shots. Peace of mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we've had good luck. One final word. I mean, like whether or not to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now. Yeah, one one yeah. final word because. <laughs> I mean, everywhere is just changing. Things are changing. Things are getting paved. Things are... <laughs> Your life is accelerating at a crazy rate and it's just going to get more complicated and harder to go. You're going to get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, time, even on the trip, just goes so fast. Uh, and you talk to friends back home and you've had all these experiences and crazy life-changing things and so much has been packed into this amount of time you can't believe it and you ask them what's new in their life and they kind of go oh it's you know sort of the same like weather's not that good and then it was nice because it was summertime and you know whatever yeah i mean so big things are happening for people at home too for sure but time is is really different time to do it time is really different and they'll be waiting for you when you get back. Bye, because at the end. <laughs> <laughs>